the transfer of a phosphoryl group, which is either phosphate itself or a phosphate ester, to a nucleophile is called phosphorylation or sometimes phosphoryl group transfer. This reaction serves two purposes in biochemical systems. It's used either to install a good leaving group, turn something that is a poor leaving group, such as hydroxyl, into a good leaving group, or to tag the nucleophile with negative charge, enabling molecular recognition, keeping the molecule inside the cell, and things like this. One quick nomenclature point, the phosphoryl group is PO3. And so in phosphoryl group transfer reactions, we often refer to this molecule that on the reactant side has the phosphoryl group that's going to give it to the nucleophile as the phosphoryl donor. The nucleophile, which is going to donate a pair of electrons to gain the phosphoryl group, is referred to as the phosphoryl acceptor. And this is an unfortunate case, and we've seen a couple of these already, for example, with hydrogen bonding, where the sense of donating and accepting electrons is the reverse of the lingo with respect to the phosphoryl group. So the nucleophile is, of course, donating the electrons, even though it's the phosphoryl group acceptor, and the phosphorus, which is the electrophile, is accepting electrons, but we can think of the molecule on the right as the phosphoryl group donor. We've seen a number of times in this course the need to convert hydroxyl into a better leaving group. And the way nature does this is through phosphorylation. By now, we're very familiar with the idea that OH does not want to depart with a pair of electrons to form OH-. But phosphate is much more inclined to do so, particularly when it's coordinated to a metal cation, which increases the Lewis acidity of the group and encourages it to depart with a pair of electrons. The most common metal we find serving this role is Mg2+. When these two oxygens are coordinated to an Mg2 plus cation, that strongly encourages this phosphate to de depart with a pair of electrons, particularly in an enzyme's active site. It often won't do this spontaneously, just in solution, but in the active site of an enzyme, this carbon O bond can be induced to break very easily. When the phosphoryl group is transferred to water, the net result is the hydrolysis of the phosphoryl group donor, say, in the first step. We end up with a phosphate molecule, that's here, we can just abbreviate this as PI, and a neutral alcohol, HOR. And this process tends to be strongly exothermic or exergonic overall. This just emphasizes the point again that we can think of hydrolysis of a phosphomonoester or other organophosphorus compound as a phosphorylation of water. Thinking about the mechanism of phosphoryl group transfer is actually really interesting because at that phosphorus atom we have a PO double bond which suggests we could do a nucleophilic addition elimination type mechanism and we have something that can act as a leaving group which suggests that we could do just a direct substitution mechanism. And experiments have shown that generally the mechanism of phosphorylation involves SN2 at the phosphorus atom. And this was shown by making the phosphorus stereogenic, using different isotopes of oxygen to make the phosphorus a stereocenter and observing inversion of configuration at that phosphorus through a concerted substitution mechanism. There are two other mechanisms that are possible, addition elimination and SN1, loss of the leaving group, before the nucleophile comes in. We can think of these as associative and dissociative. So for example, the associative substitution, which is an addition elimination type process, would involve the nucleophile coordinating first, followed by loss of the leaving group. And for phosphorus, this is okay, since this pentavalent intermediate is all right. Although we're violating the octet rule at phosphorus, that's not a big deal for this third row element. A second possibility is dissociative substitution with loss of the leaving group first, followed by the coordination of the nucleophile. If this occurred, we would expect random stereochemistry at the product, even if we started with a stereo-defined starting material.